friends. Today's video is not a full bag tutorial. I've already shown you start to finish how to make the H2O to go slip. And I will link that in this video if you haven't checked that out. But today's video is an enhancement, if you will. I won't call it a hack because it's not changing up the pattern. It's adding to the pattern. And you guys can thank Dana Sparks in our Facebook group who originally made this bag and added this enhancement. And you guys went crazy for it. And I have to admit, it's, it's gorgeous and it makes a lot of sense. Um, she did a wonderful job writing out the instructions in the Facebook group, but a lot of you were requesting a video, so I thought, why not? I will add this so that you guys can see. So right now, if you've got a sealed bottle in your H2O Go, it's not a big deal. You don't worry about it. But if you have, like me, one with a lid and a straw, it can kind of bobble around. So Dana added a little drawstring cinch top to the top of hers and you like I said you guys went crazy for it and it's so cute and it's not hard. Jumping right in you don't need a whole lot of extra materials. Today I'm using a ripstop because it is still waterproof but it also is much easier to bunch for this the cinching part. I find waterproof canvas is a little bit too thick in order to get a nice bunch so I found this in my stash couldn't tell you what thickness it is. I think they do come in various thicknesses. Just use your, your discretion. And then you're gonna need some sort of roping. I just also found this in my stash. You can use paracord, you can use ribbon, whatever you want. Once you thread it through, you can add a knot to the thing and you can tie it in a bow. You can just tie it singly or you can use one of these little plastic toggles, which I will be using today. For the ripstop, you're gonna cut it 16 inches wide by six inches tall. And we do need to finish these short edges first before we put it into our lining. So ripstop, I mean, you can iron it, but it doesn't really hold a crease very well. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna fold the end a quarter inch under and then fold it again and clip it in place so that we can sew the folded edge. And we're gonna do that on both sides. I just sewed both sides. So this is the wrong side. This is where the folded in portion was, and this is the right side. So now I'm gonna fold it hot dog style so that the wrong side is together. And you're gonna grab your ribbon, cording, whatever you want. It needs to be at least as wide, but you're gonna wanna tie knots on. You wanna have something to grab. So I would cut an additional length, but keep in mind that when you cinch your bag, you're gonna have all this extra tail hanging, which isn't totally necessary. So just cut um, maybe, I don't know, three inches on each side. So an extra six inches from the width of this. Cut it down to the size. And then I'm gonna just tuck this under in this fold here, just like this. I'm gonna clip these bottom edges to keep the raw edges lined up. And then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew a half inch casing up top, making sure we're not sewing on a ribbon or cording up here, just to keep it in place up there. And then I'm gonna base along this bottom edge to keep the raw edges together. All right, so the drawstring portion is complete. We're gonna set that aside and prep our lining piece now. So as you'll notice in the written pattern, it is uh, the lining is a quarter inch shorter than the exterior and that's to make sure that the lining fits in snugly and it's not baggy. But to add our casing here, we're gonna need to add a quarter inch to the height measurement. So I went ahead and cut out my lining and I added the quarter inch along the straight long bottom edge. So now it's identical um, height measurement as the exterior. So what you're gonna wanna do though is we're gonna turn it on its side and we're gonna from the shortest point here, which is the curved portion, we're gonna measure one and a quarter inches down and cut it into two pieces. So my one and a quarter march is right at that bottom part of the rounded circle. Now we're ready to add our drawing string portion. So we're gonna center it on um, the main body here. So there's a, a gap on each side and so this one, it, it doesn't matter, right or wrong side, because remember the casing, the folded edges are now inside. So there's no right or wrong side here, but this is right side facing up. It's centered on this, and you're gonna take the top edge and fold it down and sandwich it between. So clip this in place. You wanna make sure you have all of the raw edges together and lined up, going all the way across. And then we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across so that when you take a quarter inch from this top and a quarter inch from the bottom, that's a half inch total, that will get us back to being a quarter inch shorter on our lining so that the lining shouldn't be baggy. 
So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch across here right now. So it's now caught in between, but I want the seam to lay flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it down towards the bottom of the lining and I'm gonna, from the right side, I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna top stitch right here so that the, the, line, the seam on the back points towards the bottom. At this point, the construction is now going back to how it's written in the pattern. We're gonna go ahead and sew up this side. Remember, this is the lining, so you do have to leave the hole for turning. Um, so I'm gonna do that real quick off camera, and then I'll just show you how to um, add the toggle, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about how I position it in the bag, and this portion of the tutorial is done. So the last portion for this part is we're gonna add a little toggle. Again, if you're just gonna tie, you know, cinch it and tie it, you're certainly welcome to do that. Add a bow, a cute little ribbon. It all works. You don't need this toggle in order to do the cinch top hack, but I happen to have one, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. So in order to um, get this through, you have to compress the top button so that the holes line up, and then you'll stick, oops, stick your, um, thread through on both sides. So you have to go from back to front in order to get them through. And then I will just knot these two ends together. You can do one at a time together, it doesn't really matter. Okay, there you go. So you push the button to release the tension and then you compress the button to cinch it. Now you're gonna go ahead and just add your oval base and you're gonna put it inside your lining as I've instructed in the written instructions. Ordinarily, I tell you to put the seam towards the front of the bag so when you're looking in, you don't see the seam on that back wall. But for mine, I tend to put the drawstring towards the back so that when the extra, um, roping, cording, whatever is hanging, it's on the back of the bag. It's not hanging on our pretty front pocket because usually we're using like a designer fabric that's our focal point on that front pocket and I didn't want my, my thread and toggle to hang on front of it. So you can put your seam wherever you want, front or back, it's totally up to you. All righty, it's all done. So as you can see what I was talking about, the opening I have towards the back of the bag so that when I cinch it shut, the toggle hangs towards the back. Again, it's personal preference, doesn't really matter if it was in the front, you can, you can do what you want, but you don't wanna, you don't need your cinch top, you can just tuck it in, it's kind of out of view, or pull it out. So versatile, so cute. Thanks again, Dana, for your contribution in the group for this.